Today we are going to explore a Turkish supermarket and oh man, that's gonna be interesting because once I arrived to Turkey, I found a lot of stuff that I haven't seen in my home country. I literally have no idea what kind of stuff it is. This is the neighborhood I'm living this week, somewhere in the center of Istanbul. And it's one of Turkish supermarkets I have in the neighborhood. There's another one over there, but these two supermarkets are quite small. So right now I'm waiting for a taxi for a driver to take me to a bigger place, shopping mall with a really really large Turkish supermarket. So we were waiting for our taxi driver for like 10 minutes straight and apparently we had to cancel the order because the driver wasn't moving at all so we called for another taxi and right now we're going to have a cup of tea while waiting for another driver. В Турции еще ни разу никто не агрессировал, когда я снимал, но я думаю, что если пойти в какие-нибудь районы туристические, супер туристические и там Гранд Базар, не Гранд Базар, наверное, там кто-то будет возникать, типа, что вы этим снимаете, а так просто и в Азии, и здесь в Турции люди очень хорошо относятся к съемке. Merhaba. Believe me or not, but it got us exactly 31 minutes to wait until this car we got enough time to drink that cup of tea. That kind of cafe serves only Turkish tea. That is a great concept. Anyway, see you in supermarket. Welcome to Migros supermarket. It is a huge Turkish chain of supermarkets. Basically, if you're staying in Istanbul, you might see a lot of their stores everywhere around the city. There are also many sizes of this supermarket. Basically, there are some tiny Migros jet stores and super huge 5M Migros supermarket. And it's funny how they call them, like there is Migros M, Migros MM, Migros Triple M and Migros 5M and basically the more M the bigger supermarket is. And we are staying at MMM Migros, the biggest among all the nearest supermarkets in the place I stay in Istanbul. Our ultimate goal is find something interesting in this supermarket and also see what kind of stuff do Turkish people have at their grocery stores and how expensive or cheap it is. Let's start with prices for all kinds of basic food. The first thing is of course bread. You just enter the supermarket, turn right and you see long shelves full of bread. And apparently there are two kinds of bread in Turkey. Lots of different options of bread made in local factories. And also some artisan bread or the bread that was baked right at this place, right at this supermarket. This bread actually looks far more better than the cheapest bread I found in Russian supermarkets. And here's one thing that I really love in Turkish supermarkets. Have a look. The price tag here has not only the price for the bread itself, but also the price for one kilogram of it. So you literally can compare how expensive this thing is compared to this one. So this bread is apparently more than two times expensive. Most of breads here, they cost anything between one dollar and a dollar and a half. But honestly, if I want to buy bread for myself, I will not get anything that that is behind me, I'd rather get some artisan bread. This part is everything for around one dollar a loaf, and in this part the breads are about two dollars a loaf. I will definitely like to get one of these breads. They look nice. Here are also some toast breads. The cheapest one and the simplest one cost 25 Turkish liras, a little bit more than a dollar. And this loaf of bread cost exactly two American dollars. And here's a funny thing that I just noticed. Apparently Turkish people love to have burgers or anything like hot dogs. I haven't seen such a variety of bread for burgers and hot dogs in other countries before. I really like to see that there is a great variety of bread here in Istanbul, literally so many different kinds that I even couldn't show you every single piece of bread they have. And right now we are staying at the dairy section and apparently Turkish people, same as Russians, they love dairy products. But they love it in a different way. All kinds of stuff they have here is actually just yogurt and once again a different kind of yogurt and cheese in Turkish language peynir, peynir again and over there Creme Pinier once again. <laughs> Let's have a look what kind of yogurt we can find here. Under this Mayveli yogurt I can see something that I'm rather familiar with. Such kind of stuff you can find even in Russia, even this very brand. But such kind of thing we do not call kefir, it's actually just called yogurt in my country. More normal yogurts over here, some yogurt with Spider-Man and Frozen. So apparently Turkish people do have some yogurt they can choose from, but it's like not that much compared to Russia. The diversity of milk and milk products they have here is actually not that rich, although I'm happy to see that they do have this kind of condensed milk, it's really yummy. Basically what milk they have is some pasteurized milk, organic milk, flavored milk and something called 
I run. So one liter of milk cost about one and a half dollars and that's like a normal price here in Turkey apparently. Anyways, that kind of milk and yogurts is something ordinary for me. What is really not ordinary is this kind of product. Huge cans of yogurt. You just have a look. They are literally selling such kind of huge buckets of yogurt and that's basically something like Greek yogurt. Turkish people love to eat this together like with normal food and sometimes they also eat it without anything else. Like literally spoon by spoon. Oh nice, I found the open package and that's how this yogurt looks like and apparently one kilogram and this is one kilogram box. Cost exactly 32 Turkish Liras if you have a card of this supermarket. And this kind of yogurt looks much more affordable than anything else and when I see the prices for bread and milk it feels like more expensive than I pay for the same products in Russia. And right next to the yogurts we have a huge variety of cheeses. And talking about cheese looks like they do have something that I usually like can find at a Russian supermarket or any other supermarket around the world and prices for such kind of cheese will be more or less similar. But together with that kind of cheeses they also do have some local goodies. Very tiny packs of this cheese. I actually have no idea how to call this but in Turkish it's like Pinar Dil Peniri. And over here they have a giant packs of the same kind of cheese. And this actually looks quite affordable. For example, this 700 gram pack costs only 100 Turkish Lira. Well, yeah, it sounds more or less affordable to me. More or less 5 American dollars for 700 grams of cheese. Looks like a good price. And of course they have a variety of cream cheese and that kind of cheese. This all costs anything between 1 and 2 dollars. Check out this egg section, it's actually very interesting. First of all, these are normal eggs and these are organic eggs. Apparently Turkish people really like organic stuff. That eggs here more expensive than Russia, like about two more times expensive. Like about two dollars or even more than two dollars for a 10 pack. Although they are not only selling the 10 packs, they do have tiny six packs of eggs. Here's 10 pack, here's like 15 pack, 30 pack, 20 pack. And also they have very interesting system of grading eggs. You see this M letter? They have like small, medium, large and extra large eggs and most of the eggs I can find here is uh, just medium and it's really convenient to see not only the size of the eggs but also how heavy it is. Oh my goodness, look how cute this package of butter is. It's really cute and I've never seen anything like this in my life. By the way, this cost 50 Turkish Lira for a small pack and about 215 Liras for one kilogram. I just realized that if I will keep showing you like every single little detail, this video will be more than an hour long and I don't think that you will want to see one hour long video from a Turkish supermarket. So let me show you prices for all the basic food real quick and then jump to the most interesting things that I found in this supermarket. So here's the prices for random stuff that I might get for myself. $2 per liter of sunflower seed oil and this 4 liter bottle is literally the smallest I found here. $5 per liter of olive oil also in huge bottles. Very cheap salt, flour and a bit more expensive sugar. 1 kilo of rice would cost me $1.5 while spaghetti is significantly cheaper. Chicken legs $2 a kilo, pork $5 to $10 a kilo and beef crazy $16 a kilo. Somehow even salmon is cheaper than beef at this place but these guys didn't really want you to know that. Onion and potato cost half a dollar a kilo, tomatoes are slightly expensive and bananas are unreasonably expensive here. And talking about cheap stuff, a liter of cola is just half a dollar, the biggest pack of lace is less than a dollar and biggest pack of Pringles cost two bucks. The prices here don't always make sense and I fortunately met a local person to give us some comments about the prices and Turkish products. My name is Su, I'm from Turkey, I was born and raised in Istanbul, I'm working here as a lawyer. <laughs> So, oh, and what's in your bucket today? Nothing yet, <laughs> but uh, as I had no time to prepare any meal for me, I am planning to buy something ready to eat or at least something ready to heat in the microwave. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the prices for groceries? Uh, do you feel it's expensive or is it low? They are rudely expensive, let's say, because the inflation here in Turkey, if you compare it with the prices a year ago, you will see the huge difference. Uh, so yeah, it's a bit hard nowadays to buy whatever you want to, especially for the people who live on budgets. So we're not happy about it, let's say. Can you introduce like, some of your favorite local products? Uh, first of all, we have sarma and in Migros they sell it as a product. It's kind of, there's a leaf, grape trees leaf, and we fill it with some rice. It's pretty uh, famous here in Turkey 
and it's also vegan so that's why young people prefer it. I also like yogurt. Uh, in abroad they usually know it as Greek yogurt but it's a part of Turkish culture. We eat everything, almost everything with yogurt. That's why we need big packages rather than little ones. Thank you so much. No problem at all. Hey guys, Nikki the editor is here. I just have a quick message for you from Thailand. That's where I'm staying right now and soon gonna film another supermarket video from this wonderful country. I know that some of you are interested in learning Russian language. I recently started a paid community for Russian learners. It might be useful for getting some additional speaking and writing practice for you. I host this community together with my friend Sofa from St. Petersburg and both of us wish to make the process of learning Russian language a bit easier and more enjoyable for you. You can learn more about my community at at nikiproshan.com slash russian club and if you decide to join this month you can use discount code early bird to save a few bucks now coming back to turkish goodies and this tiny island might be the most interesting part of these supermarkets. They literally have some Russian salad, it's well known to me, but what they also have is something that I never seen in my life, for example this kind of thing. I literally have no idea what kind of stuff it is. Here's also a very tiny local kind of dumplings, they call it manti, Turkish manti, and over here is Turkish couscous. I know how to call this kind of thing, but I have no idea what it actually is. What I know is it's delicious. On the same island they have lots of kind of pickles you see such kind of cans full of i don't know carrot cucumber cabbage whatever else is inside and you also can mix your own choice of pickles over here it's like really cool they have such kind of stuff and here's also grape leaves i guess that is grape leaves are you sure about that? Never seen anything like that being sold in a Russian supermarket before. A little bit more than four dollars per one kilogram. I was just approached by the local guard around there who said like no photo, no video over here, but I'm pretty sure that in Turkey you can film in public places, including supermarkets. So that's all right, I guess. I found some lace chips over here and I thought I can find some like very unique taste and they sold this baharatli. I thought it's like something local and unique, but it just means spicy. This just means classic but it's funny to see such local people on this lace pack. The only taste that I saw is unique over here is yogurt when I've seen yeshilikli and it's actually crazy how cheap these lace chips are like one pack of 150 grams cost less than one dollar and a pack of original Pringles cost double of that just two American dollars for 165 grams. Well guys, I spent about two hours wandering around this supermarket looking for interestingness and showing you the prices and I just realized that my phone has about 10% of charge so it's time to find five different local products that I haven't tried before. Purchase it, come back home and try it together with Lisa. And I know what is gonna be our first thing to buy at this place. Turkish coffee. You most likely heard about Turkish coffee a lot, so do I. I actually like this kind of Turkish coffee, Mehmet Efendi. I literally cook this kind of coffee about like every single morning. But after arriving to Turkey I realized they also have other kind of Turkish coffee. Turk kahvesi, normal Turkish coffee, Dibek kahvesi, which is basically a variation of coffee with lots and lots of sugar. Can you see there's like 67% of sugar. And the ones that I want to get for myself today is this Turkish coffee this musty gum. This must taste like really delicious. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye bye. Thank you. So we got our goodies. I guess let's go home and try it. So that's basically all what we got here today and that's all gonna be our breakfast. Three kinds of dolma or whatever you name this in English. Gonna hit this stuff and eat with Turkish yogurt. Turkish coffee will be our drink and as a dessert it's gonna be this kind of like I don't know Swedish or maybe really sweet stuff together with really weird dessert drink. I googled what kind of stuff is that and it says uh, this bottle actually has some alcohol. That kind of meal, basically rice covered by grape leaves and covered in that flour, it was surely interesting to try. I didn't quite like the stuff that was covered in grape leaves, it was just okay, but the flour one was like really really delicious. Although Lisa doesn't really think it was delicious. <laughs> 
And that actually smells amazing. I can smell some notes of coffee together with this gum. I think that's gonna taste just amazing. It does. It's not so bad. It's like mix milk and some apples. It's very interesting to try this, but it's definitely not something that I would like to have often. I think it's only that I like in our breakfast. 